What is the best technique to get accurate scans of the contact areas? This is the first question. Mark asked, what is the best technique to get accurate scans of the contact areas on the adjacent teeth? Mark asked a really good question and elaborate on why it was hard for him to scan the contact areas. Sometimes, he would need several passes to scan the margins, but this would lead to the repeated scanning of unintended areas. So, he is worried that the layering of the data would give inaccuracy in contact areas when doing model's crown work. This is actually true. So, let's talk about how to solve this. First, we will take a look at some user's comment. Actually, Mark answered his own question, and other users, including me, agree. Idiliano gave an excellent reply, emphasizing the importance of using the lock function and communication with the ref. Just to add to this, I posted our detailed protocol in response as well. I explained my method in five steps. On Facebook, this was written as a text reply, but today I would like to explain it in more detail through pictures and video. Chen, do you have any tips to actually scan the contact area? I do a quick scan first and then always cut out the contact area before starting the final scan. When performing a final scan, I simply scan the contact area in one sweeping motion. And I use the lock function to prevent layering. Oh, I see. Actually, I discovered scanning protocol by analyzing a video of Chen scanning, like how athletes would review game tape. Chen scanning technique has become the gold standard in my clinic, and all staff members are to follow this protocol to save chair time. I am confident that following this protocol would make your scanning more efficient. We have prepared a solution video on how to do this. Let's watch it together. In his question, Mark was worried that unnecessary layers in the scan appeared in the data. As we all know, data being added onto the critical parts can give inaccurate results for modelist crowns, especially in the margins and contact areas. In our clinic, when explaining the layer phenomenon to new staff, we often compare it to painting over the same spot. I've observed from my staff that when they try to get perfect results, they would scan and rescan the same area but this actually causes inaccurate data. So I always emphasize that the key is a simple scanning movement because there is less clutter. This is a sketch I draw for my staff showing the sequence and I'd like to share it with you. When I draw this path, I never lift my pen once. It is drawn in one continuous line. In the same way, the entire part of the prepared crown could be obtained with a single uninterrupted motion there is a lower chance that layering occurs because we scan in a three-dimensional motion, so some points or lines could overlap, and layering is hard to avoid in some areas. In addition, in order to achieve sufficient data of the green color in the reliability map, rolling motion is required, but if the motion is excessive, layers may also occur. We need more than just a diagram to standardize the scanning sequence. So, we made a protocol that every staff member can understand. 1. Determine the target of the scan, margin, contact. 2. Like a sniper, decide on the order of target sequence. Focus on one target before going on to the next. 3. Set the appropriate focal length and perform the primary scan in a continuous movement as uninterrupted as possible. 4. Analyze primary scan to see which areas need supplementary scans. After locking properly scanned areas, focus only on the areas with insufficient data using the HD scan mode. Let's take a closer look at each step. This is the key thing I think about when doing the simple movement. Without a target in mind, your movements become random and inefficient. This can lead you to go over the same areas, which unnecessarily layers your data. 
We have to categorize specific scanning points like mesial and distal contact and margins, not the entire crown, to precisely process the target. In our clinic, we like to erase the scan data of contact areas already gathered from the pre-scan and start the scan over in the contact area. Step 2. Decide on the scanning sequence of targets. We have already set a target. For contact areas, we recommend completing scan in one shot and locking it so that it prevents layering of these areas. In contrast, it is difficult for margins to get complete data in one shot in practice. So we don't recommend trying to get perfect scan data for margins in one go. Rather, it's better to think of this as getting a rough outline for margins in the first scan. So we often start from the mesial contact and roughly scan the entire crown, ending with the distal contact. Where we start and end the scan may vary depending on the surrounding environment. Step 3. Set the appropriate focal length and perform the primary scan in a continuous movement as uninterrupted as possible. Next, we start the scan movements. We have to set appropriate focal length by considering the length of the crown and the space between adjacent teeth. Then, proceed with the scan in the order of distal contact, body and margin. Mesial contact in the same way as in the previous diagram. The primary scan is performed with the mindset of obtaining approximate data of the entire crown through the spiral movement. But keep in mind, while the body can be roughly scanned, we need accurate data for both the distal and mesial contact points in the primary scan. Step 4. Analyze primary scan to see which areas need supplementary scans. After locking properly scanned areas, now it is time to evaluate the results of the primary scan. If the contact areas are not properly obtained, it is better to completely delete the scan data and perform the primary scan from the beginning. Rescanning multiple areas will only result in inaccurate data. So if you fail to achieve getting what we need from the primary scan, it's better to start over. If the contact areas are well obtained, lock them with the lock function. The same applies to the body and margin of the crown if the data is well obtained. Expose only the part that you think is insufficient so that it can be scanned, and adjust the local length to scan only that part as if you are sniping that area. To do that, we recommend increasing the focal length. HD scan mode would be helpful in this process. When scanning margins, we emphasize that you scan in a rolling motion in such a way that you hit the target from various angles. After achieving green colors on the reliability map for all margin areas, your scan for the modelist crown is finished. The last step is rescanning the areas with insufficient data using HD scan mode. After achieving green colors on the reliability map for all margin areas, scanning work for the modelist crown is finished. 